Let's dive into it. If you're ready, John, we got a lot of I am ready. And thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. 27 minutes are going to fly by. So they will. We got a lot to cover. So, John, I, here's my first question. Over the last five or so years, um, are you seeing, you know, in all your meetings with law firms, strategic planning and surveys that you do, are you seeing compensation models becoming more formulaic or they are less formulaic and more subjective? What are, you know, what kind of trends have you been seeing? Well, I'm um, happy to share that. Let me tell you where I'm getting my opinion. And uh, it's based on data we collected. Uh, we did a webinar in March, 165 law firms participating. And we do the live polling and it's anonymous, it's instant. And here we collect data and uh, that and, and, you know, articles I've been uh, read just through the trade press and what I see among clients, law firms with whom we work. And yes, uh, there are some distinctive trends within compensation systems, uh, one of which uh, Morris was subject subjectivity. Is that what you were asking about? Yeah, I'm kind of asking is. Are, is it more subjective? You know, look, every firm's got some sort of comp model based yep. on your billable hours and origination and et cetera, et cetera. But how much does sort of subjectivity play in more or less? Like, are you you're doing a good job? You're contributing to the culture or you're just, right. we don't really care. I, about that. I find, you know, we look at very formulaic systems that look at hours and collections and origination, stuff we can measure and quantify but those more uh, less less easy to quantify the firm citizenship, the leadership, the business development, the mm -hmm. mentoring. I think those are valuable contributions. We should find them somehow measured, rewarded. Uh, however, our data suggests we're going the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Firms are becoming more formulaic, slightly, and we asked over the last five years. Has your firm's changed at comp system? And about a third of firms say, yes, we have. And a comp system should evolve, should adapt. And then we asked, all right, how's it trending in terms of the changes? And we are seeing a slight trend toward more objectivity. Okay. And we'll get down on, on you know, what is measured then in terms of those uh, objective data points that, that base compensation. So I like the subjective component. I think how managing partners get paid is an interesting conversation because uh, they're oh. sacrificing a lot of their billable and, and uh, collections activities, origination building activities to run the firm. To run the firm. So, so before we get to that, let's go back to what you just said. What are the things that are you know being weighed more heavily in those commons and obviously billable hours is probably number one and i would guess origination is number two but uh well let me tell you we asked we kind of looked at four major components uh of compensation and this is for equity partners primarily uh it may apply to your income partners associates but this is uh, re relative to your equity partners we asked seniority how heavily does it weight is that weight trending up or down Mm -hmm. And seniority is being weighted less and less. Back in the old days, lockstep seniority-based comp systems were not uncommon, and there's still some out there. But I think we're seeing less weight to seniority, considerably less weight to seniority, and more weight to performance. So when we ask the question, how much does your firm weigh seniority when setting compensation, 41% say not at all. El Zippo. And uh, very few firms put heavy weight to the fact that you've been around for 30, 40 years. Okay. And I think that's good. I, I think, you know, what have you done for me lately? Uh, seniority is important, especially the founding partners. There may be some exceptions and carve outs, uh, but uh, I think it's about performance and how do we measure performance? You know, I, personally, I feel seniority is important to, for culture. And sort of sets the direction of the type of firm. But John, what about non-equity partners and associates? I mean, most firms have the majority of their producers are not the equity partners. They're the non-equity and the associate. So what about on those levels? Are they getting more formulaic? I think they are more becoming, they're following the trend of how we uh, compensate owners and what we look for. Uh, and so I think, yes, more formula. Uh, we ask about billable hour expectations you have for your associates. 1,800 seems to be the number. Nice bell curve around that. Mm -hmm. 
And then we get into, you know, uh, realization, utilization, uh, these sorts of KPIs as well. Moving to collections, which is the dollars you bring, you work, yes. you bring on, on your back. That is the heavily weighted component. As I look at our data, 78% of firms weight collections heavily or very heavily. Right. And that is trending up. More weight on the money you bring in the door on your back. Right. Now, if you're an equity partner and you've got the choice to work this file or go mentor an associate, what what might you be more likely to do uh, if we're heavily weighting the, the, the work you, you, you bill and collect on? Uh, but this is the data. It kind of bucks what I like to see and what I often recommend to firms who want to see more teamwork, more sharing, more investment in associates, right. more focus on marketing and business development efforts. Right. So um, those are a lot of the things that firms, you know, talk about their values. You know, you always at, at your at your events, I know you always do a, a, a word um, something word clouds. Like, yeah. yeah, word cloud where, you know, what's a word to describe your firm and, you know, culture, camaraderie, uh, leadership, mentorship, those are always the big words up on the screen. But are you seeing firms placing a value in that when it comes to the comp model? Like you just said, how does a managing partner or any equity partner decide, do I want to work a matter and bill some hours? Do I want to try to drum some business? Or do I want to go spend two hours and take a few associates out for lunch um, and, and mentor them? But how do I want to do, do I want to share origination credit? Well, that's uh, so, so boy, <laughs> origination credit, we understand the concept of rewarding the folks who bring in the clients, bring in the matters, well, that's, yeah. no clients, no matters. We got nothing. So, so what rewarding our rainmakers and origination credits, the mechanism that, that 95% of firms will use. Uh, but boy, if we're, we're putting origination credit for life, when you bring a new client, Get ready for a lot of internal disputes over my client, your client. If we want to encourage sharing, teamwork, cross-selling, I think we should be looking at more shared origination, so, practice group origination, so not mine, have, mine, mine. You have uh, data on that. Do firms or do significant amount of firms sort of let the origin, origination credit taper off over the years after a client is brought in? Or is it well, we, for life? My first firm, Sunset Origination, on the client, new client coming in, you got three years of credit. After right. that, it became a firm client. House account, yeah. We still originated at the matter level, but at the client level, that Sunset. We wanted our rainmakers out bringing in new clients, not resting on clients they brought in. 20 years ago. And when we look at the data, we ask flat out, does your firm sunset origination credit at the client level? Very for few firms do. Wow. 9% after three, 4% after five, 77%, excuse me, 73%, it's origination credit for life. Oh, well, you retire. So when it talks about sharing, my client. Wow. When we talk about client succession, as you near retirement, try it, client transition, but you're rewarded for holding it on, holding on to it as long as you can. There's where I see the disconnects for us. Firms talk a good game. You mentioned the word cloud. You know, how, describe the culture is what we ask. One word to describe the culture at your firm. Up come the words. Unfiltered. Family. Collegial. Collaborative team, firm, and then you look at the comp system and what that measures and rewards and incents, and often it's the exact opposite. Right. It rewards hoarding. It rewards control. Uh, we talk a good game around teamwork and sharing. I think the compensation system should reflect the culture you're trying to build. Right. And if share if team is some is important, and I think it should be if we're in a law firm, uh, we should we should find ways to encourage and reward sharing and teamwork. Right. I have to say, I, I always love that word cloud exercise. I also really like that we're 
using the word cloud here in a different way than I normally talk about cloud. It's really refreshing. You like to talk about the clouds. Yeah, yeah, but I don't want to talk about that cloud today. We're not here for that. (laughs) If we were having a, if we were having a webinar talking about cloud for law firms, we'd have like six registrants on here. We have way more than that today. Before we went live, Uri and I are bantering. How's the weather? Uri Morris. Uh, Mm -hmm. I do so many of these with Uri. Uh, Morris, how's the weather? And he goes cloudy. And I uh, Morris, you're, you're always cloudy. So, all right. I want to, <laughs> I want to pull it back a little bit. Let's yeah. go back. What were the, the main components? We have a couple of people from the audience asking, uh, what were the four main components yeah. in the comp models that you So seniority, on? seniority is frequently yeah. factored in some way, somehow, uh, but less and less and a mm-hmm. trend toward even less. So the trends more toward performance and how do we measure that collections? The dollars you bring in and work on your back, your personal collections. Mm -hmm. And some firms will use different terms to describe that, but there's the work that you do and bill for. That we get, and the firm gets paid for. Uh, get, yeah, you got to get paid. It's okay. dollars in the door, not, not bills out the door, dollars in the door. And boy, I've seen some firms well intended to reward billable uh, bills put out. It's about bills getting paid uh, that's far more important. Yeah. But uh, as well, the, the collections piece, the originations piece, and how that looks. Mm-hmm. And we are seeing distinctive trends toward toward more sharing, toward sunsetting, but it's not nearly as prevalent as you might think. Most firms reward origination. They reward it heavily. And in most cases, almost three quarters of cases reward it for life at the client right. level. Right. So we've got so seniority, we're... we've got realization rate, we've got originations, anything else that's really- The last piece I, I want to put in there is uh, firm citizenship. Okay. You know, the concept of sharing, of teamwork, of showing up and being involved, mentoring, business development. Uh, hey, you're the partner in charge of AI and how we're going to integrate that to our practice. Well, boy, if you're leading a practice group, if you're taking on a project, uh, that takes some time. But- and in many firms, it's not, in my opinion, measured and weighted enough. But have you seen, John, an objective way to measure citizenship and contribution to the oh, yeah. firm? Or is it yeah, just we can objective, objectify like the subjective. The five? We could do that. We could put together a little metrics. And okay, what do you mean by firm citizenship? I mean, showing up at partner meetings and being a positive contributor. I mean, getting your time in. I mean, treating associates respectfully and support staff respectfully. Um, I mean, things like that, uh, that that we don't see in the numbers, but have a huge impact on our culture. And are we forward thinking, uh, investing in our future? David Meister talks about this. Billable hours, they're important for today's income. Billable hours. But our non-billable time, and get, get the word non out of there, non-billable, non-equity, non-attorney. Our investment time, right. investing in our people, investing in our clients, investing in our infrastructure, including technology, mm-hmm. that's going to determine our future. And if we're so short-sighted that all we look at are your billable hours and your dollars in the door, mm-hmm. I think you know that's, that reflects our culture is very short-sighted. So if we're a firm that's looking at legacy and succession and longer term plans, which believe me, young lawyers, when you're out there recruiting, want to see, you know, where am I going? What, what am I jumping onto here? And they want to see firms that have a plan, are investing in their future, have a great mentoring and associate development uh, uh, thing going on. So, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Right. And if you if you say one thing, but you measure and reward something else, uh, you're probably going to get what you measure and reward, at least what people yeah. perceive. You who, measure. Who, who is it that owned that, that takes credit for the quote? What gets managed gets you know, what gets measured gets ma- what gets managed gets measured gets managed gets done. You know what I'm talking about. You, right? you got yourself in a in a quad. It's Peter Drucker. Thank you. And he talks about what get what gets measured gets done. What gets measured tends to improve. Right. So what do you measure? 
uh, what are the KPIs you're looking at? Right. And uh, do others see? What do others see? We, we talk about transparency, Morris. And I might want to make sure we touch a little bit on transparency and who sees what. Right. What so do the associates see? Let's get, you know, that was, I was saving that for the bonus round if we had time, but let's, let's get right into it. How, how are you finding, are law firms being more transparent with their comp models? Are they sharing them with the part, with the equity partners, with the non-equity partners, with the associates, or are they kind of keeping them like, you know, like Google search algorithm or the recipe for Coca-Cola locked away in the vault and here's here's your bonus check. We can't tell you how we got there. You know, many firms are still very secretive. Uh, The equity partners, we get to see everything. You know, the the performance reports, uh, the client reports, the compensation schedules. As an owner of the firm, I think you're entitled to see the books and see the numbers, and and there shouldn't be an issue around that. But that's typically, Uh, you know, 10%. Correct. Most so what do you share firm. with your income partners? Notice I didn't use the word non-equity. Your income partners, the folks who are coming up the ranks, they're not yet owners. They want to see. They yeah. want to see your numbers. Uh, what are you willing to share? I think the more willing you are to share, uh, the more engaged they become. They, they have a sense of what they're buying into. It's right. not some deep, dark mystery. Sign the partnership agreement. Then I'll show you the books. I don't know. Uh, I kind of want to know what I'm jumping into. Uh, We are a very huge uh, proponent of transparency and encouraging firm owners to share as much as they're comfortable with. And are you down through to the associates? Are Uh, you seeing the data that firms are starting to share it? Absolutely. In a big way. That's probably the most market trend. As we look at five years, changes to the comp system, when we drill down on these questions around transparency. Okay. Much, much more transparency in what we share with our associates, our non-owners, and our income partners, even support staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in a lot of firms still, the associates don't even get to see their own numbers, you know, much less those of their fellow associates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what do you have in those reports? What, what do you have in there? Uh, often I'll sit down with a room full of associates without partners in the room. And hey, what what's what what's what do you what's the messaging you're getting on marketing and business development? And the partners are will say, oh, we tell them all the time how important it is. It it determines their promotability and their bonus, and we want them out there. And then they talk to the associates; they ain't hearing it. Yeah, it's funny. You know, all they all they put in the reports are, are my billable hours and and my collections. All they talk about at year end review are my billable hours and my collections. So this idea that they care about me getting out and joining the organizations of the community, I'm sorry. They talk a good game, but they ain't giving me incentives to do it. Talking about transparency. So about 30 years ago, I had a summer job. Um, Those of you who are New Yorkers on the call will know this. I used to had a summer job for two summers working at Nobody Beats the Wiz. That was the uh, Northeast version of Circuit City back in the day. And Uh I was a salesman, CD players, Walkman, all that kind of stuff. But Every morning, or maybe it was every week in the break room, they'd post the sales report. It was a one-page document with, you know, all the salespeople and how much you sold and how much spiff you, you did and how much extended warranties you sold and how much each of us earned in commissions for the week. Uh, that was how they did it back then. But it was important, you know, they would highlight the top five. They would like circle things and write, great job, oh, way to go. Color is good. We got people in green, people in red, people in yellow, yeah. you know, call but, those numbers out. But uh, today, the, the technology exists that your people can be seeing their metrics, their KPIs on a dashboard. A lot of the, a lot of the more modern practice management systems have those dashboards, right? When you sign in, you're at, you know, 26 hours so far this week. Uh, you haven't entered any time for yesterday. What's going on? Like a lot of that stuff is automated. It's available and definitely Absolutely. What it's measured and what gets shared. We see it gets improved. Well, And I think Morris is what per- people perceive is measured and rewarded. Right. So, you know, we- you know saying it and doing it often a disconnect, especially yeah. around compensation. So, as always, this half hour is flying by. So I want to get to something else. What about operational management roles. You know, sometimes you've got partners who are either head of a certain practice group, they're head of litigation, they're head of real estate, they're head of whatever it might be, or you've got partners or associates even who sit on a committee. And we all know what committees are famous for, but let's put that aside for a minute. They're on the real estate committee, they're on the HR committee, they're on the the IT committee. 
is that factored into their comp model at all, either as a, you know, how did you do on it? Or you're going to get an extra 20 grand for sitting on this committee. Or if they're ahead of a practice group, the profitability of that practice group, are those right. things factored in? We're seeing uh -huh. those things, but it's rare. I mean, so often these leadership positions, be it a committee, a practice group, a branch office, heck, the managing partner, and how they get paid for all this firm building time. Because guess what? They're sacrificing a lot in terms of book building, personal production, their collections for the good of the firm. Mm -hmm. And yet those contributions don't show up in our numbers. Right. And so managing partners, we have run, it's, we don't have it, have time to talk about it today, but maybe another time more is how managing partners get paid. And these people who are contributing substantial yeah. amounts of investment time to the firm. I think uh, if I were asked to take on a leadership role, I'd want to have a clear understanding of what my duties and responsibilities are and how I get compensated for a job well done. Right. Deb, there's you're not enough of those conversations going on. Deb, if you're listening, we got a topic for a future uh, half hour huddle with John here. Are uh, you listening, man Deb? How managing man partners get paid? <laughs> managing partner comp models. Watch, I'm going to see her pop into the chat window any minute now. Like, hey, yes. managing partners. I've had a couple of calls just the past few weeks for managing partners trying to negotiate with their colleagues because right. they feel they're undercompensated. But, but John, what you're saying is doing. generally people who are put onto committees are not compensated for being on that committee. It's just like, hey, it's your job. Be on this committee, you know, do it for two years and then we'll graduate you out. Generally, no. But there's a difference between being on the committee and leading the committee, preparing okay. the agenda, running the meeting, holding people accountable for the stuff they said they were so going to get are done. Are either of them compensated? In some cases, committee membership very rarely. I think that's just a responsibility that you're going to serve on a committee or two uh, as an equity partner, or even associate or support staff, that that's just part of the deal. Uh, but it's the leadership roles that involve a lot more time and and effort. And uh, often we task our rainmakers to those roles. Uh, really, do you want your rainmakers running the litigation department meeting? Wouldn't you rather have them out have them out fishing rather than running a, a, a group of litigators? Because right. we know that's tough. One thing I just want to make sure we want to touch on managing partners really interested in, and I, I want to, you know, uh, just the multiple between the highest paid and the lowest paid equity partner. What's okay. the, what is, what's what's, what's the that spread? spread on that? And uh, you know, among founders, you get a founder maybe making 10 times as more as the other equity partners. Uh, but we're finding about uh, a multiple of four on average between the high pay and the low paid equity partner. Multiple four of X. four. Wow. Four X. Uh, here about 8% of firms, it's eight X or more. The difference between wow. high and low. We are seeing a market trend toward compression. Compression. And bringing that spread okay. down, uh, which I think is interesting. And is it something you think about? Is it deliberate? Uh, you know, those, those ranges and, and is there compression? In so many firms, we hear it again and again. Our top performers are underpaid. Our underperformers are overpaid. And here it surfaces in the data again, and we'll send you all this data we've alluded to through our conversation. So, but uh, I'm about, you know, taking good care of your high performers so they don't leave and take their teams along with them. So uh, we've got less than three minutes left. So I want to ask you one question uh, to sort of wrap it up and give people some good takeaways before we wrap up. When you work with firms, um, when you're doing their strategic planning and their retreats and you're helping them build or adjust their comp models, what are the biggest mistakes that you see them make? What are, is it things that they're just too tolerant of or just stuff that they, they know is wrong, but they can't let go of the vine? You know, law firms are steeped in the way we've always done things around here. And anytime you propose change, you're going to get, well, we've never done that before. What are other firms doing? We're giving you the data that's going to help you make the argument. And I think that um, really tuning into your people, what holds them, what's attract them. You know, uh, now National Association of Law Placement, money's number one. Money's number one. Guess what's number two, everybody? Work-life balance. 
Uh, you know, there's no perfect system I've learned over the years. That they really do range from very objective to very subjective, very transparent, very closed. There's still the occasional black box you run into. Jones Day is famous for that compensation system. But um, at the end of the day, I hear rough justice. Now, sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. Right. Uh, generally, in our surveys, most partners seem to be pleased with their firm's compensation systems. Uh, but about 15% call for change. Right. So there's no firms. one thing that you can say like, oh, I've seen this happening a few times. Again and again and again. I think it's just talk, walk the walk kind of thing. If right. we want our associates out there involve, you know, business development activities, let's measure it. Let's define it. What counts? Going to synagogue, right. going to church probably doesn't count. But right. but joining the young lawyers associate, young lawyers section of the bar and getting involved in a committee Define what counts, measure it, reward it. You just might see some of those activities occur, but so often we talk, 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 and fail to track, measure, and reward the have contributions. You, have you ever seen toxicity on a on a formula? How toxic is this partner? One to five. Well, you know, uh, I've seen. And are they let's call it firm them. citizenship. You know, is you know. A lot of firms have those problematic personalities, either the chronic underperformers or the people who are just very, very difficult. We we right. read we all know about the no asshole rule, and yet we tend to tolerate uh, folks who can be disruptive yeah. if they have that book, a big book of business. Like we Jay tolerate Will. a lot. It's technically not allowed, but nobody's ever gotten fined for it. All right, so, John. Thank you again for doing you, this today. Morris. This was great. Uh, everybody, we've, you're going to get probably two emails from us in the next couple of days. One of them is going to be a lot of the data that John spoke about. That'll come from John. I think it'll come from you or I don't know where they're going to come from. You'll other, get it from one of us. The other one's going to come from us, which is just a quick recap. Uh, it's a two question survey. How much, you know, how valuable was this 30 minutes scale of one to five or one to 10 uh, and any suggestions for future webinars. So do me a favor. I know you're getting tons of surveys. You know, you go to buy a cup of coffee. They want to know how was the service, but fill it out. It means a lot to us. We like to keep running these every th three weeks or so. We want to do it on stuff that's valuable to you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of the week. To those of you in the Southeast, stay safe over the next couple of days. But Morris, thanks for having me. Good to be with everybody. Thank you, John. Bye-bye. Bye now.